April 28th, 1994. Jim Healy's final show on KMPC. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to feature a few of our all-time classic tapes tonight because this is sort of a nostalgic occasion. I'll tell you why a little later. Okay. Good to the point, will you, Jim? Okay, for openers, uh, we'll cross you up for openers with a tape you have never heard before. And then Jim played some of his favorite tapes, including this medley of on-the-air goofs. Much to the chagrin of the announcers involved and much to the delight of his listeners. Nobody did it better than Healy. Dateline, uh, Sunset Strip, nostalgia time continued. And finally, the Anaheim Mighty, Dicks, Mighty Ducks get their first <laughs> win. <laughs> they built a four-goal lead. Say what? That was a fluff by an American Sports Radio Network announcer reporting on the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. And finally, the Anaheim Mighty, Dicks, Mighty Ducks get their first <laughs> win. <laughs> they built a four-goal lead. <laughs> <laughs> Get to the point, would you? Well, think? it isn't just network guys who pull fluffs like that on KMPC. How about the time KMPC newsman Marv Howard reported Jim Herrick was the new UCLA basketball coach? It's going to be another ball burner. Unlike Larry Brown, Jim Herrick had no second thoughts about accepting the Bruins' head job Tuesday when athletic director Pete Dallas <laughs> <laughs> called at 7 o'clock and said, Are you ready to join me in the toughest coaching job in America? <laughs> Unlike Get to the point, will you, Jim? Well, it's not really in the ballpark with some of radio's all-time classics. Like the morning sportscaster Silvertip Stew was giving the baseball scores on KBC here. And the Dodgers still lead the Astros by two and a half, the Giants by three the and Astros. Half. Those Astros. are the Astros. What did I say? <laughs> Never mind. That's what I thought I said. <laughs> the, the Houston... I think... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's, well. that's a different kind of nickname. I wonder what their symbol would be on their caps. <laughs> <laughs> that was marvelous, Jim. Simply marvelous. <laughs> if that doesn't make you giggle, nothing will. Then came the final curtain. Big line, Sunset Strip. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, effective Monday, KMPC will have new ownership, management, and programming. So in signing off tonight, I want to say what a delight it's been to work with Bill Ward, Gene and Jackie Autry, and so many other really class people here at KMPC for the past nearly 10 years. We'll meet again, don't know where, don't know where, but I know we Exactly 87 days after he turned off his microphone on that April evening, Jim passed away. It's great for you to be standing out here talking to me like that. I don't feel good. I wouldn't I don't give a Doug. I'm the f***ing manager of the f***ing team. i got to make the f***ing decision. And I'll make them to the f***ing best of my ability. It may be the f***ing wrong decision, but I'll make it. Don't worry about it. I'll make the f***ing decision. I gave you a f***ing chance to walk out of here. I can't f*** around without two games to one. If you were just there, it's a different f***ing story. I don't give a s***. You got three, three left-hand hitters, and they all got f***ing hits on you. Rivers, Jackson, and the f***ing other guy. <laughs> hey, what? Well, that's something you didn't hear in the just-concluded 1990 World Series. Right. It was L.A. Dodger manager Tom Lasorda mic'd by NBC TV when he strolled to the mound, the Yankees pitcher Doug Rao, in the 1977 World Series here at Dodger Stadium. It's one of the all-time classic underground tapes, and the quality of the sound is surprisingly good. Right. Remember, this was Lasorda's rookie year as Dodger manager. The New York Yankees led the series two games to one, but Southpaw Doug Rao couldn't even get the Yankee left-handed hitters out. In the dugout, Lasorda stood up to come to the mound that he told pitching coach Red Adams, just give me a sign, Red, when I get out there. Just give me a sign, Red, when I get out there. I'll, I'll mess around for some time. Okay? No. He can't get them f***ing left-handers out for f***ing old f***ing money. <laughs> Yeah.
Jack, you get jammed on a f***ing door. You good, Tommy. I don't give a shit. You feel good or four motherfucking hits up there. <laughs> well, f***ing hits off the way. I don't give a Tommy. Yeah, left hand right, 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 But that's my damn job. I'll make the decision I'll make the fucking decision here. I'll make the fucking decision here, okay? Like there were three runs on the board yesterday. I don't give a. Fuck. <laughs> I'll give you any. I'll make the f***ing decision. Give you a f***ing mouth shot. I told you. Here's Dodger second baseman, Davey Lopez. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. They talk about it inside. This is not the place they're talking about. Okay? That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's all I'm trying to say. great for you to be standing out here talking to me like that. I don't give a shit, Doug. I'm the f***ing manager of the f***ing team. I gotta make the f***ing decisions. And I'll make them to the f***ing best of my ability. It may be the f***ing wrong decision, but I'll make it. Don't worry about it. I'll make the f***ing decision. I get the f***ing chance to walk out of here. I can't f*** around without two games to one. If you were yesterday, it's a different f***ing story. I don't give a shit. You got three, three left-hand hitters, and they all got f***ing hits on you. Rivers, Jackson, and the f***ing other guy. <laughs> How do you do? I'm Jim Healy on KMPC Los Angeles. Brought to you by your Southern California Chevrolet dealer and United Airlines. State line, Los Angeles, double tag department. Jim Murray and the world champion yesterday wrote, Cincinnati became the 13th team in World Series history to sweep four games. You got a problem with sort that? Sort of. Aline Elliott's game story in the World Champion says the Reds became only the 15th, 15th team in the World Series history to earn their title in a sweep. Who goofed? I've well, got actually, to know. Actually, neither goofed. Cincinnati was the 13th team to do it in four games, uh, so Murray was right. But the 1907 Cubs and 1922 Giants were also unbeaten, though there was one tie in each series. Okay. Okay. Headline, <laughs> Los Angeles Press Review. Great nostalgia piece by Marianne Hudson and the world champion over the weekend about Gilmore Field, home of the old Hollywood stars. But... Part pulled a boo-boo, quote, Gilmore Field, located at Beverly and Fairfax. That is so much crap. It was located at Beverly and Genesee, Genesee, well east of Fairfax. Gilmore Stadium was located at Beverly and Fairfax. Who goofed? I've got to know. <laughs> Headline, sent that strip, flashback. Mid last week, we mentioned a wild hunch that in another of life's ironies, Cincinnati would win the 1990 World Series while the man who helped mold the team watched from behind bars. Gambling road. Gambling road. Now, why don't you work out? <laughs> okay. <laughs> State. Headline, Los Angeles Press Pickups. Item from columnist Mud today, quote, when Fred Rogan and Todd Christensen, uh, when uh, Fred Rogan has Todd Christensen around to point out every mistake he makes, who needs Jim Healy? Calabunga, dude! <laughs> Say what? Well, a reference to NBC's announcing team on yesterday's LA Raiders San Diego Charger telecast. Bad team, man. Bad fucking team. <laughs> Headline Oakland, Mr. Repetitious Department. Among his other faults, CBS TV's Tim McCarver has a habit of repeating himself. Did on the World Series telecast. Get to the point, will you, Jim? Well, talking about Dave Stewart, McCarver mentioned Stewart had had a streak of six consecutive postseason wins in a row. You got a problem with and that? Why didn't McCarver add one after another and straight to consecutive and in a row? Calabunga, dude! <laughs> Stay tuned. Hey, Lionel.